Okay, we're back. Before uh, William H. Morrow III joins us, let me try to do part of the promo. I don't know if you could see him, but to my left, which is to your right, yeah, we have you? this you? gentleman right here, this painting, this wonderful watercolor painting, you know him. That's uh, a self-portrait of my co-host and mentor, the, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman, because Dr. Bill is a fine watercolor artist. You can see the William J. Eisman collection, not all of it, but 95% of it, by going to lowercase, mind you, all one word, no spaces, no hyphens, or what do they call those, underscores? Underscores. No, all one word. William J. Eisenman Collection dot Tumblr dot com T U M V uh, L R no, Yes, Tumblr dot com. If you see something you like, go to newslettercensor dot com. Send Dr. Bill um, a um, an email and ask him if the particular painting is still available, or you can leave a comment under the painting and say. I'm interested in this painting. I would like to acquire it. I would like to procure it. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you make a sizable gift to support this work, very sizable, you can procure um, one of his authentic watercolor paintings signed by William J. Eisenman himself. We had to move Billy Jr., as I call him. Yeah, because Mr. Anonymous kicked me out of my spot. Yeah, he was he was evicted by V for Vendetta, Mr. Anonymous Mask. But uh, until until Billy joins us, William H. Morrow the Third, commercial voiceover specialist, and um, <coughs> we will do the um, the ominous voice from the uh, the New World Order, the one the top twenty. Used to be one percent. I say twenty percent because they they want the the bottom eighty percent toyminated. They want to they want to uh, euthanize us in a very sneaky sneaky slow way. Like maybe with vaccines, vaccines, toxins in our supermarket, yeah. food, toxic foods. Sounds like this. We are We are here to kill you. Nice. Yes. Now, Beautiful life to look forward to. Yeah. I was talking to um, Dr. Bill off the air about um, supplementation of probably nature's richest source of minerals and trace minerals, which is sea vegetables. In this case, kelp, which is uh, known as kombu by the Japanese. Kombu. Kombu. And uh, some health gurus, like uh, this old book I have by Carlson Wade called Magic Minerals, among others, recommend that you take six kelp tablets a day, six a day. And then if you read the bottle, you get like a warning that tells you only take, as directed, only take one per day, no more, because of iodine. That's 494. You mean the, re the recommended daily allowance for Six iodine? Of those. If there's 99, there's 99 milligrams in each pill. Kelp pill. You mean micro, milli, milli or micro? Oh, iodine is micro. <laughs> Big difference. Oh, oh, they probably would have killed me after that, like they tried with Gary Noll. Remember? If it was selenium, you would you would have gotten poisoned, man. Mm -hmm. Selenium poisoning is very real. They sabotaged him that one time. Oh, oh yep, here he comes. That might be him. Hello. James, Dr. William, how are you? Is hey, this, Billy. Is this William H. Morrow III himself? There's only one. All right, commercial voiceover specialist. You are loud and clear and on the air. You mean you haven't cloned yourself yet? <laughs> you know, I, only I one? Me. 
<laughs> this way you could be dating yourself. Now, uh, I'm going to hold up the newsletter because I know William H. Morrow III. Oh, by the way, wh where is your location now, William Morrow? Right now I'm in Dallas, Texas. Dallas, Texas. Oh, uh, make sure you have some really good barbecue for us. I always do. I'll bring some back, guys. Yeah, you know, that. you know, there's a, there's a famous uh, uh, a barbecue place that has been on uh, the Food Channel and the Travel Channel. It's called the Salt Lick in Austin, Texas. And then there's one in uh, Waco, Texas, called the uh, the Big Texan, I believe. And a lot of tourists go there. Yeah, they're all because everyone is good. Even the little mom and pop hideaways are tremendous. Really? Oh wow! They're they're all great. They really are. Good, great. Now, um, up, now, uh, William, Sir William, uh, I, I I introduce you to the folks. You know, telling them who you are. You you've been our commercial voiceover specialist for many years, and this is the first time that. The first time I interviewed you in that previous show on video, the very first time, and I've known this man for over 30 years, and uh, I'm just happy that we have we have you as a new addition to Progressive Discussions. And uh, I'm going to hold up the newsletter, and William, I know you have uh, something to say uh, that you normally say as a promo for the newsletter. So you could begin any time. Yes. The best way to join your organization is to go to www.newslettercensored.com. Get your free annual subscription with your gift to support this work. We're living in emo emotional and end times, so you need newsletter censored people. All right. All right. James. Thank you very much. Now, um, You're welcome. I we were me and uh, William H. Morrow the third was having a a pretty good discussion the other day, uh, um, um, Thursday. Uh, I usually have meetings with uh, William Morrow. Uh, I try to have meetings with him at least twice a week. And we were talking about certain subjects that were societal. And uh, I think you, you might have written them down, the topics. I know one of them was this paranoia that people have today of speaking to strangers Ooh. that if they don't know you personally, they really look at you like you're Lon Chaney, the Wolfman. You know, they, they avoid. <laughs> it, 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 is very, it is very bothersome because the uh, parents are teaching the kids don't talk to strangers, which is absolutely absurd. Uh, one of had many discussions with people, one lady, one in particular. I said, Do you have any friends, ma'am? Yeah, I said, So well, what were they before they became your friends? I said, what happens, uh, you're in trouble, you call the police. Mm -hmm. Why? You're calling strangers. Now, let's say you're getting attacked or mugged on the street. A stranger comes to your rescue. You tell him, get away. Call my uncle or whoever, so-and-so. No. Then the final thing I usually end with and tell them is, uh, could you repeat the FBI study on attacks? They're like, what do you mean? It's so uninformed, James. Well, it, the study shows that 90 plus percent of all rapes and murders are committed by a family, friend, or relative. So I would say the odds are you're better off with a stranger. And then they had some stuff on CNN, talk shows with psychologists and the whole bit. And they said the same thing, so this has got to stop. Teaching our children to be afraid and fearful of strangers. They're looking at fear. Well, when somebody just says hello or hi to them, it can't continue. It's crazy. Yeah, if, if you need help, if, very bomb, very bomb. If, if if you're if you're in a crisis, I mean, of course, they want help from uh, good Samaritans, from police officers that happen to be strangers. <laughs> Don't talk to strangers. Why yeah. are you calling strangers? Yeah, I mean, uh, everybody starts off as a stranger uh -huh. before you become close friends with them, right? That's why I always say, hey, ask somebody you know, and usually not. They know they've got a problem. Yeah. But uh, when they say yes, they say, well, what were they before they became your friends? They right. didn't know them. They were strangers. Exactly. Now, the, o the other thing was this... I'm um, interrupt you, but why don't you go, if you're Catholic or what have you, if you need help, go to your priest. Oh, that's right. You might get molested. Now, that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? So what's all this, putting it all, the onus on the strangers for some reason? It's very strange to me. 
I'm it, sorry. It, no, that's okay. That's okay. Um, so, yeah, and then we were also, uh, Sir William and I were also talking about um, this, this obsession with parents that are afraid to accept the fact that their child was not meant to get a scholarship. Oh, I'm sorry, our Oh, that, that you know, parents that are obsessed with the fact of the, they're not they're not willing to accept the fact that their child is not a genius or not college material or scholarship material, and uh, that you know if their grades are down, something is wrong with the teacher or the educational system, and they have well, to take. It's, all, it's always somebody else's fault. That's how parents today to be parenting. If you ever think your child is just not as intelligent as some, uh, that's why you have learning centers, you know, which you have to pay for, obviously, to hopefully in an SAT two years, you have everything you need to try to get an edge or gain an edge, so to speak. Um, it's not, I forget the gentleman's name, he gave a closing speech at a, at a graduation ceremony about last year, I believe it was, and he told the truth. He said, you're not all special. Let's stop it. And it oddly followed up by the USA Today articles and everything else saying, he told the truth. We're setting people up for failure. Because right away, I'm special, I'm special. Then when you fail, a lot of these people panic. My God, what happened? Where did it go wrong? And blah, blah, blah. You're not special. I argued with this years ago when I was building Super Tech. And Everybody's creative, I heard from some people. I don't believe in that. Everyone yeah. has an idea. Yeah, you see. An idea for what? I've talked to many people and so said, if you're opening this hole, what you do? I don't know. They haven't given it a thought. So, you know, you get all these... Well, for example, these, these motivational speakers, I won't name names, but I think most of your listeners know who they are. A very good friend of mine owns an advertising agency. Well, you could name name on the show. <laughs> well, I'd rather not. I just get some, just in case. With a wall nowadays, let's play it safe. Okay. But uh, he was down filming some commercials for some of these motivational speakers. And in between takes, he heard them all, a lot of them, together having their drinks or whatever in a room. They were laughing. Saying this is the preacher's joke there is that people buy every little, I'm not going to swear, but piece of, you know what? We say to them, you just tell them that everything's going to be good, you can be great, you can be grand, you can do this. And he said they were laughing, making a joke of it. And this other guy overheard them with my friend who was the ad agency. He says, these guys are with your face. I can do it better if I tell the truth. So he opened his own company. He's now a multi, multi, multi millionaire, hundreds of millions of dollars down in the Carolinas. So, I mean, uh, uh, of course, they're trying to... for failure sometimes. I just, everything's great. You're creative. You're special. You're this. Whatever happened, you're saying, you know, like the gentleman did at the uh, commencement cer ceremony, you are not all special. We are not Let's all stop. Archimedes. Make yourself special. We're not all Archimedes. And, and what about these Huntington uh, commercials, the Huntington School Year? Oh, like well, it's all. schools that will give you an edge, just like my friends that are at some of our SAT tutors. Uh, they guarantee your child's SAT scores will go up so many certain points. They guarantee you not right. get money back. And uh, one friend of mine, Steve, I won't give his last name, has never, never, in over 10 years of teaching, had a failure. They know the tricks, how to teach them, how to, what to look for, the yeah. questioning on the SAT and the ACT. Well, they're very good at what they do. You, uh, learning centers such as Huntington and some of these other ones, they're very, very good. You well, there the, are tricks to learning, let's put it that way. The point with those uh, Huntington's so what, and all sorry, those really kind of... The point with all those kind of learning centers, is, it brings up one basic fact. The fact is that Speaking learning... I barely, barely hear you, please. I'm right here by... Learning has always been of the apprenticeship model. One-on-one, -on -one, tutor, not a classroom, and that's why if those learning centers do work, that is why they work. 
the one-on-one -on -one relationship. Well, that too, plus maybe our testing beliefs aren't right on target too. Some people just simply are not good testers. They can be as brilliant as can be, but they don't test well. No. Well, that I mean, some of our best people, our best creators, inventors, what have you, did not do well in high school, college, or even middle well, uh, junior highs back then. They just some people are just not good testers. Is that simple? Yeah, you put them in a different environment that's not right. a classroom you know, environment. How many people have been homeschooled. Look how well they do. That's it. Yeah, that's or or, or on the or on the job. Let's say they're they're. Uh, they learn on the job training how to run the family business and they continued the family business very well, successfully and you know and we're also seeing a, a huge rise over the past number of years in, in uh, trade and technical schools <laughs> so, so yeah that's, that's been on the yeah well the problem is the jobs plus. the jobs are just not out there Billy I mean people are graduating well, the jobs from will never be out there per se anymore Jim because uh, technology robotics the guard jobs that like are gone are not coming back. They don't need all back. the people on the assembly line anymore because now robots can do it and they don't get tired. They don't want a raise. They don't want to renegotiate a, a contract or more per hour. The only thing maybe once in a while they need to be oiled or repaired. But, uh, neither do the outsource. is replacing jobs. Yeah, neither, That's a known fact. Neither do the outsource employees in China and Bangladesh that are making next to nothing. They. Uh, I mean that's another yeah. thing. Uh, and yeah, they, robots do not, robots do not look like they're putting uh, those on Wall Street out of business. Well, and also you had years ago when Apple, I forget where they were manufacturing. Where the country it was, I think it was either Indonesia or India. Could be China, they, Foxconn. In just two weeks, they had to cancel the contract. The quality was not there. No, so no. outsourcing is one thing. What is the quality of that outsourcing? True. You know, it's but, not just hey, we're saving a buck here or there. How good is it? Very true. And, and 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 what the what the conservatives, the with like Chris Christie, what the conservative politicians are doing is they they want since they want to privatize everything and shrink government, they want to privatize education. And what that'll what what that will cause is that only the the children of the wealthy can afford. A decent education if you privatize that. So that's well, another thing. Christie is privatizing the lottery. The lottery? Really? The lottery. Wow. Colleges are getting too expensive, but that's what you're saying. Are They're you supposed to be free. Community colleges enrollment because that's all people could afford. Like they were. Not once. that that's wrong. These are great institutions. Burton Community in, in uh, Paramus, for example, Paramus, New Jersey, I believe, is ranked number one in the nation. As, really? Well, community, uh, Thomas Edison is a state college, right? The, I'm not sure what yeah. that but, but, the, but, 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 but it, you know what's sad? You have a child who's got a high IQ, a genius IQ, but he lives in the ghetto and he's dirt poor. In the and, ghetto? In the ghetto, yeah. Like, no, he's doing Elvis Presley now. In the ghetto. Think about, think about how lack of money is holding people back. No kidding. Yeah. But then again, you know, when you call from so many different tangents to uh, you know, even abortion and this and that bad medicine, somebody may have killed the next Edison, the next Steve Jobs. I mean, it's so far reaching and intertwining, it's yeah. hard to explain. But, the, you the, know, it's, you, people, people deserve a great chance. A mind. One should have an, a right to a great or, or good education. Yeah. A mind there's is so a many people out there want to learn, and they're willing. They're they're dying to learn, especially many of these foreign countries too. And especially these countries that hold back their women. They're not to be educated. That's ridiculous. Yeah, the Islamic countries, you mean? It's it's, it's insane. People want education, not all, but I mean a great amount of it. The world populace yeah. wants to be educated. They want to learn things. Well, an education, a good education should be a a right, not a privilege, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, nobody should be held back because of lack of funds, uh, you know, right. because a mind is a terrible thing to waste, like that commercial. Yes, the NAACP mind is a terrible thing to waste. Well, that was the United Negro, 
United Negro College Fund commercial. Yes. The yes. mind, yes, it's very true. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. It is. Talent. Talent. Ta gentlemen, I'm losing your signal. I've got to cut off now. Um, oh, we're getting, we're getting lower and lower. Yes. We're down you to two bars, baby. Be getting, but it's gotten a little lower too. Really? Yeah. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe the clouds. Uh, uh, maybe you're getting overcast. Uh, it affects wireless. Um, Possibly. But we should get it corrected by next week. <laughs> yeah. It's and we've got a lot more to talk about, gentlemen. Yeah. Yeah. We 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 had a big debate about the Paula Dean getting fired for uh, and. For, for doing saying what she said, and I, I have brought up Jimmy the Greek Snyder. Remember when he got fired? Well, Jimmy the Greek Snyder, uh, Howard Cosell, saying, Look at that little monkey run. Yeah. I, it's sad to see that society has become so thin skinned you can't open your mouth anymore. Really, I mean, it's no big deal. You can call me, look me in the eye, call, call me every name in the book, and I just don't care. It doesn't, yeah. I, I'm not that weak. Yeah. Let's stop being so thin skinned, everyone. Okay. Do, you, do you consider that you sensitive? You can't even say what it really is nowadays. It's the N word. I mean, people, come on, let's stop it. Uh, do I you, mean, they yeah. want to change the name of the Washington Redskins. But we've got to stop this. Well, they went. We're they went. Thin skin and everything is degraded. Yeah. Everything is. I feel offended. Oh, I, I've never been offended. I don't know what it feels like. What does being offended feel like or mean? I really don't know. No, you have a Nothing strong uh, self esteem then. I could care less what you call me, you know. Yeah, they they want it. Don't be nice to you and smile to you. So well, I'm sorry you feel that way. Yeah. Well, I re I remember when they took the Indian yeah. off of the uh, the helmet of the Washington Redskins and they put an arrow, uh, a spear, an arrow, yeah, a, spe yeah, a spear, spear in its place. Complain about the Florida State Seminoles and their chants. Seminoles, yeah. Chop, hand chop. Uh, Stanford University was Stanford Indians, or I believe, yeah. and they changed the name of the, the card to like. Cleveland, the Cleveland Indians put a put a big C instead of the uh, the Indian head no, with no, the smile. the Indian on their hats. Good, but they returned the, the Washington Redskins. Yeah, but why is nobody complaining about the Cleveland uh, Indians? That's true. Because they don't win. Because they don't win. <laughs> Redskins or what have you? I mean, they're like they're like the Browns. I don't understand this. Hey, they're like the Browns. Wait till next year. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. What does the Browns mean? They have they have a boring helmet with nothing on it. It's just. Like orangey. Oh, I hate to say this, but the Cleveland Browns, when you watch them from a, a, a distant camera shot, it's like watching a little tomato patch running around. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the tomato patch, exactly. They, God uh, bless them. You, you hope they return to yeah. glory sometime. And, and but, every 10 years later. But you, you, consi you consider all this censorship, Billy, right? Well, no. I'm sorry. Not censorship as much as just plain whining and bitching. You need something to complain about. Yeah. If it's well, not that, it will be something else. Well, what, what Jimmy the Greek said was actually based was on... A compliment. He said the black athletes could run faster because of a tendon in the back of their foot or heel or whatever. How is that? Yeah. I'll put that well, well, he... I don't I've never understood that. Well, he said genetically, the uh, uh, they did selective breeding back in the slave days, which happens to be true. They did do that. Well, who knows? That said, is that true? And I don't know. But for that matter, they blame the white man for so much else. Let's face facts. A lot of the black leaders in Africa way, way back sold their own people into slavery to be brought to the Americas. That. That's true. Nobody seems to want to mention that at times, do they? No, they don't bring it's that up. Blaming, no. I, I mean, I'm white. I admit it. But, uh, I love everybody. It's not blaming the white, the white man or whitey, whatever you want to call me, for everything. Well, whitey, whitey. Now, the only whitey now that I'm against are those elitists. Well, I don't like elitists. I don't like racism. The only thing I am prejudiced towards is prejudice. I don't believe yes. in hating anybody or any group. I sure. believe in your right to believe in, I That's strongly true. believe in the right to pursue happiness. Whether you're gay, yeah. straight, crooked, <clears throat> purple, pink, yeah. I don't care what you are, but you have the right to pursue happiness yeah. and I will support that right. And one of our famous leaders of past history, God, I can't remember who it was, and I'm blind, but I may not believe in what you say, but I will defend your right to say it. So that's very important to remember. Yeah, somebody so, said it, but, but you're... Right you, to pursue you, happiness and speak what you want. You, but I'll defend your right to say it, but oh, don't say the N-word. Yeah. I blame the Food Network for bailing on Paula Dean. Now, now you're talking. 
I think they should have survived. Same thing with Jimmy the Greek, it was a corporation. And was it really that wrong when she said she used the N-word? Okay, we make this into, it's bigger news in Afghanistan now or something. Well, they used to call us... It's not a big deal, it is absolutely nothing. Well, George Jefferson used to call us honkies all the time on his oh, show. yeah, honkies were... Cracker? Cracker woods or whatever. I, nothing wrong with that. It doesn't bother me. Sharecroppers, whatever. You can call me a stupid white man at done that. I'll still be your friend. Hello, you gotta remember, Jimmy, my football career, as long as it was, most of the teams I run were always at least half white, half black, or give a little bit of a lot of yeah. Hispanics too as well. Thank God, we all teased each other. Yeah. Nobody got offended. Yeah, well, Archie Bunker got back at Jefferson. The O word. Offended. <laughs> offended. Oh, come on, people, grow up. Grow some skin and some thickness on you, will you? Everybody's so thin skinned, my God. Oh, every little thing yeah. offends. But, I'm offended. I'm, I, you don't even know what it means. You know, that's what I tell people. But I've got to run, gentlemen. All right. Okay. Nice. Well, it's great to talk with you. We will continue as always. Yes. William H. Morrill III, take care, and I will talk to you off the air. And we will meet as usual. Yes. All right. Hey, gentlemen, have a nice evening and good luck. Okay. Bye-bye. Right, thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Glasses. Spectacles. Spectacles. We'll make a spectacle of this stuff, okay? Yeah. Oh. Shall we begin? Shall we begin sinking our teeth into these readings? <coughs> when Jonas saw... The researcher who developed the Salk vaccine for polio in the 1950s was asked if he wanted a patent on his vaccine. He famously answered, could you patent the sun? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Compare his response to Myriad Genetics Incorporated which found the mutation in the BRCA1 and BRCA2 gene that is likely to cause breast or ovarian cancer. This is a brand new article? Correct. So sounds very similar. All right, continue. Myriad would share its knowledge only if it was paid a steep price by each desperate, frightened woman who thought she carried the dangerous mutation. What happened to idealism in medical research and caring about the welfare of humanity? Oh, the humanity! Yeah, that was uh, Newman on Seinfeld. <laughs> Serenity now! Seren that was Frank Costanza. Serenity now! Hold on. Serenity now! Oh, serenity now! Actually, it's the first, our first ringing of this show. Levity bells. What we usually see is a rush for profits for the spoils. Yeah, not a rush for Limbaugh, a rush Often for profits. at the expense of solid research. Patents for medical research should not be allowed. I, for one, would want my medical researcher to be working because he wants me to be well, not because he wants to get rich. Well, you know when a big pharmaceutical company gets a patent on a drug and then the patent is about to run out instead of allowing other companies to come up with their generics, the big company pays the other companies to not come up with their generics. Can we all say Lack of competition? Yeah, that's what I was saying before about monopolies. Like Microsoft and, you know, and uh, other companies, uh, Monsanto. We love monopolies as long as they're big ones. Yeah. Hey, Ronald Reagan used to used to bash uh, the concept of monopolies. <laughs> you know, and we need competition. Capitalism needs competition. Yeah, but it was all words. Yeah. Okay? The editorial that called obesity a disease may not help. Oh yeah, I definitely read that article. 
That's so. That's an excuse so bariatric medical doctors can prescribe drugs for the obese. That's my take on it. The American Medical Association recently voted to classify obesity as a disease, implying that the obesity is a biological problem requiring medical intervention, using medications and surgery. Bingo! I didn't even I didn't even read this article, see? I was right. Surgery, that's another money maker. The uh, like what, what Chris Christie had. Yes. The gastric bypass uh, surgeries and the, the lap. The lap. L A P the lap and uh, Yeah, yeah, exactly. Money making. Racket, racket.